Right, so today I want to do a kind of different video. I want to do one that is off the cuff, free spoken, not one that of me reading from an article or keynotes, let's say, as I usually do with most of my videos. I'm going to kind of practice that needed, kind of unintegrated part of myself of me just speaking openly on YouTube videos without following a rule that is being kind of developed out of my left brain hemisphere, if you will, or my ego self. So what I want to talk about today is an image of God, or the image of God, and or a new image of God, one that is more pragmatic, or has more elements of practicality in an age of secularism. Because, as Nietzsche clearly stated in his works, God is dead, you know, secularism has taken over with the scientific enlightenment and is ridified of the spiritual nature in which we see the world, or which we encapsulate the world. And this is obviously fundamentally problematic because he predicted the generation of the last man, people that stagnate and reside in comfort, or reside in a world of comfort who fundamentally, you know, pay, pay allegiance to the preachers of equality, as he often said. So, a pragmatic view of God, or a view of God which I have I've come to accept it more, is one within unison with the Jungian uh, psychology. And that is one of understanding what the what the mandala image is or what the mandala uh, image is and how it's represented or can be understood through psychology so what jung said was that the self archetype is representative of the mandala and the reason for this is because the mandala is a kind of unified integration of all these archetypes all of these it's not just a singular representation of an archetype, but a unified representation. One there where each archetype is in, in coordinates with each other, and not one that is separated or uh, individually a representation of a particular form of understanding. And the reason why this is a profound image is because it kind of is comparative to the image of Brahman in a or, or any other kind of image of God or understanding of God within a pantheistic worldview or a pantheistic view of God. So the way I like to relate this image of God in a pantheistic way is by looking at the Mandala image as being the psychological representation representation of the self or the God image in complete unison, but also what the the physical uh, similarity or representation that is itself, which is what you could call the singularity of the black hole. Uh, not singularity of the black hole, the singularity of the Big Bang, the inside-out black hole, because what is that? That's the singularity of a centred point and an explosion or an implosion to then create a dispersion of what the universe is in full scale and full... Uh, unfoldment, and that would be like a kind of pantheistic understanding of what God is, or what Brahman is. And these two things weigh up the same, because if you took a 2D model, a 2D pictorial model of what that uh, Big Bang singularity would be, it would be that which is representation uh, representative of the Mandala image. It would be the same thing. It would be this a singularity from a central point with a massive circle and then all of these dispersed universes and galaxies and all of these different forms of being and all of this. So I see that as being two, an example of the psyche and the material living within synchronicity with each other where there is something uh, where one is represented in one form of the material, and one is 
again represented in another form, but being the same thing in the cyclical mind, through creation, through drawing, through what is understood and created through the mind of the individual, which is the mandala. So when we come to understand this, this idea of what this, or how you could understand God through this pantheistic view, within the psyche and the material, you start to understand maybe what would be the moral law that one needs to follow to become better, so that this is a more pragmatic view of God, or a, pragmo a pragmatic calling for a developed moral philosophy for the individual or for the society. And because in our age of nihilism, or in our modern age, we we have seemed to have fallen out of uh, love with a moral philosophy. We don't have a moral philosophy. So we need to develop one so that we are not these nihilistic individuals that can be easily uh, reformed like clay individuals by narcissistic leaders in our society who do not care about our personal development or societal, um, societal development and harmony. So the way in which we can do that is by looking at how we as individuals are not the image of God. We are not God in the sense of being the self archetype. We have not that that Carl Jung talks about because the self archetype being a unison is also the God image, a unison of all opposites. So how do we become that or how do we develop onto that road of individuation? would be integrating the unconscious, integrating the shadow, integrating the repressed forms of ourselves, integ integrating the cringe that is us, basically. That is what the calling is for. There's something that the same, for the Christians out there who are Christians and follow that religious view, there is something that St. Paul says to the Corinthians in one of his first epistles, and I'll read that out because that's quite interesting and it kind of relates in with this. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things, for now we see through a glass, darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And this is what he was saying. He was saying something similar to what the Mahayana Buddhists said with the idea of seeing face to face with God. Which is quite a profound idea because it brings about this idea of a moral philosophy that when God sees me, I see God. Therefore, there is a responsibility that I must partake in or adopt because there is a external reality looking back at me that is telling me to integrate something within me so I can become better as an individual, so I can help manifest a better reality for the, for the external world and for myself. Because this view of integrating the unconscious or becoming more like the God image or of the self archetype is Profound because it's not one based in jargon, it's not one based in um, what you could say philosophical discourse in the head of the left hemisphere of the egocentric self. It's not based in that, it's based in experience because that is something we all need to do to develop as people. We need to experience through the body and mind in synthesis. We need to go out and integrate the unconscious and make new experiences and make new memories by creating experiences so that we become better individuals, more well-grounded, more well-integrated with ourselves and, with a re and within a reciprocal nature with reality. Because what he says at the start of that quote is, when I became a man, when I was a child, it's like, in a sense, destroying the infantile ego, to, you know, because the infantile ego or the child is the irresponsible child in the sense of how he's demonstrating it, because that is what the child is, it's irresponsible. It doesn't take responsibility. So I think that's quite a profound little message or little quote from that, 
that kind of rings harmony within all of this I'm saying. Seeing face to face. Seeing face to face is kind of a calling from God in the sense that he's putting it, that is telling me to integrate the unconscious parts of me for experience so that I make society better. And it's not this kind of psychologically egoistic view, it's more of a altruistic egoism view, because this image of God is not exactly or this image of God that I see as being practical or pragmatic is relatable to everyone. Everyone can relate to this. It's not something that is bounded up into a specific religion <clears throat> or anything of that nature. And you could say that's in a sense what the idea of illumination is, seeing face to face being illuminated, which is the complete opposite of what we are living in today, which we are living in this kind of consumerist, narcissistic society of egoism, psychological egoism, without adopting a moral philosophy, and without adopting a moral philosophy we become stuck, or we become uh, vulnerable to the to the dangers of the world in a sense, that we don't have a thing to coordinate our minds and our bodies towards so that we could go, we go, that we go down the right path in life. We become susceptible to the, to the materialistically narcissistic realities that have been perpetuated through our kind of modern capitalistic societies that are not well developed for the individual or for for well-being or for integrating any part of ourselves for the betterment of our lives and for society in general. So that, I think, is a pragmatic view of God, or a pragmatic view of the ideal self, that a pragmatic view of God, and that it's orientated around this, this idea of an ideal self. Because the ideal self, you're only going to get to the ideal self if you integrate the unconscious. And the more you integrate, integrate the unconscious, the more you come into unison or into an image of the self archetype, which is very similar to this idea of the God image, of this integrated whole. You could kind of see it in an Ubermensch-ish uh, way, or that Nietzsche talks about becoming the higher man, or the higher individual, whatever you want to call it through creativity, creating experiences, creating newness, not newness, creating new memories, new experiences, so that those experiences tackle the unconscious, unintegrated parts of ourselves. And that in itself is, a, I think, a very pragmatic, profound, and meaningful way of looking at God in a pragmatic sense, which can help people develop a moral philosophy of what they should do in their lives to make life and society more harmonious and and just well integrated as a whole. So I think I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching this video. It was a bit more different. It was a bit more open-ended. I may have said a few things that are that could be con uh, misconstrued or, or are uh, misrepresented because I'm doing it off the top of my head. I'm not reading from a from an article that I would have written out already. So I think doing this would be good practice for me because I want to do this more. I want to do more open-ended speech for videos instead of focusing around an article where I'm reading it because I think that's an unhealthy way of speaking uh, because it's not integrated with the body as much as it could be with me just speaking and off the top of my head and integrating my body with it more. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, like the video, share it about with your friends if you thought this was worth your time watching. <laughs> um, go over to my uh, newsletter uh, on thoughtsandthinking.org where you can sign up to that and you'll get weekly articles every week when I write them and upload them to the website. So with that said, thanks for watching, and I will speak to you in the next video.